Hi, dear students. Today's our lesson will be mostly based on assessing one's language skills using CFR. Um, to start our lesson, we need to understand what is CFR, Common European Framework of Reference for Languages, and uh, then answer some questions regarding CF, regarding uh, CFR and language policy. So uh, before entering the topic, uh, there might emerge some questions like, uh, what do we actually do when we speak uh, or write to each other? What enables us to act in this way? Uh, how much of this do we need to learn when we try to use a new language? How do we set our objectives and mark our progress along the path from total ignorance to effective mastery? How does language learning take place? What can we do to help ourselves, other people, to learn a language better? In the, for this purpose, Common European Framework uh, in English as CFR is a guideline used uh, it is a guideline used to describe achievements of learners of foreign languages across Europe and uh, increasingly in other countries. It was put together by Council of Europe as a main part of project language learning for European citizenship between 1989 and 1996. Its main aim is to provide, uh, is to provide just uh, a method of learning, teaching and assessing, which applies to all languages in Europe. In November 2001, 20, 2001 a European Union Council resolution recommended using the CFR to set up systems of validation of language ability. The six reference levels are becoming widely accepted as a European standard for grading on individual language proficiency. Since its recognition in 2013 in Uzbekistan, Common European Framework of Reference for Languages, Learning, Teaching, Assessment has had wide-ranging impact on the teaching and learning of languages around the country. Ministry uh, of uh, Education, local education authorities, educational institutions, and uh, state testing center, teachers association, when it refers to foreign language learning, use CFR and framework provides common basis in teaching materials, design, test development, exam examinations, curriculum guidelines. In order to facilitate teaching, learning and assessment, uh, we need a way to specify what learners are able to do at certain levels. In many countries, um, there is general agreement that language learning can be organized into three levels basic, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. CFR aims to establish standards based on those levels. So um, this document provides uh, or just divides general competences into knowledge, skills, existential competences, which is considered to be very important uh, to teach the lang language or learn language. CFR has three principal dimensions. They are language activities, the domains in which the language activities occur, the competences on which we draw when we engage in them. Language activities are considered to be reception, production, interaction, mediation. In any language, um, an individual receives the information through listening and reading. And uh, every person produces that received information through written 
uh, and spoken in written and spoken forms. Uh, interaction occurs in spoken and written forms. Also, mediation, which is translating and interpreting, is uh, the main aim of a language while, in, while communicating. This language activities occur in educational, occupational, public, and personal spheres. So every individual uh, has got his personal pursuits to talk, to communicate, and he has uh, a society where he um, shares his, the information he has got. And every individual is engaged in some kind of job and uh, every individual is, uh, is uh, occupied with uh, education, with learning and teaching activities. Uh, a language user can develop various degrees of competence in each of the stage and to help the scribes and TFR has provided a set of six common reference levels which range between A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, and C2. Uh, common reference levels in A1, A1 is described when an individual can understand and use familiar everyday expressions and very basic phrases aimed at the satisfaction of needs of a concrete type. Um, so, a one level learner can introduce himself or herself and others and can ask and answer questions about personal details such, uh, such as where he, she lives, people he, she knows, and thing, things he, she has. He, uh, he, uh, a one language learner can interact in a simple way provided the other person talks slowly and clearly and is prepared to help. Um, I too level learner, which is considered to be way stage and uh, overall a basic user, can understand sentences and uh, frequently use expressions related to areas of most immediate relevance. Very basic personal and family information, shopping, local geography, employment. Can communicate in a simple and routine tasks requiring a simple and direct exchange of information on familiar and routine matters. Can describe in simple terms aspect of his own background, immediate environment, and matters in areas of immediate need. So, uh, Common reference levels B type and B1, um, which is considered to be an independent user, and B1 considered to be a threshold, B2 being one touch, expresses that users have indep independent uh, capacity of using the language. In B1, learner can understand the main points of clear standard input on familiar matters regularly encountered in work, school, and leisure. Can deal with most situations likely to arise while it's traveling in an area where the language is spoken. Can produce simple connected uh, tasks on topics that are familiar um, or personal or of personal interest. Can describe experiences and events, dreams, hopes, and ambitions, and briefly give reasons and explanations for opinions and plans. B2 language learner is called one touch, can understand the main ideas of complex text uh, on those concrete and abstract topics, including technical discussions in his field of specialization. Can interact with a degree of fluency and spontaneity that makes regular interaction with native speakers quite possible without strain or easy pauses. 
to produce clear detailed texts on a wide range of subjects and explain a viewpoint on a few topical issues, giving the advantages and disadvantages of various options. Common reference level C uh, in C is uh, called proficient user and C1 being effective of operational proficiency or advanced level. C2 is considered to be mastery level or proficiency level. In a proficient user starting from C1 can understand a wide range of demanding long clauses and recognize implicit meaning can express ideas fluently and continuously without much obvious searching of expressions, can use language flexibly and effectively for social, academic, and professional purposes, can produce clear, well-structured, detailed texts on complex subjects, showing controlled use of organizational patterns, connectors, cruise devices. Uh, the Q level, which is considered to be proficiency level, mastery level, uh, learners can understand with ease virtually everything they read, can summarize information from different spoken and written sources, reconstructing arguments and accounts in coherent presentations, can express himself or herself continuously, very fluently and precisely differentiating finer shades of meaning, even in most complex situations. This level, six uh, specific levels, describe what learners can do as depicted in common European framework. Common reference levels in globe scale, as you see, range from A1 to C2. For each level, the full CEF document complements this by describing in depth competencies necessary for effective communication, skills and knowledge related to language learning competencies, situations, people, place, time, organization, and context, study, work, social tourism, in which communication takes place. The global scale is based on a set of statements that describe what Lena can do. The can-do statements are always positive and uh, they describe what a learner is able to do and not what a learner can not do or does wrong. This helps all learners, even those at the lowest level, see what that learning has value and that they can attain language goals. So what is CFR is not. CFR is not a curricular document. CFR is not a compulsory document. CFR is not a tool to be put into practice directly, and CFR is not a serious document. What can CFR be? CFR is a common base to guide to practice, a descriptive document, starting point to develop new tools, a document to reflect. So uh, the questions which were given in the beginning of the class were like, what will learners need to do with their language? This question will be as a home task for you. And I hope that you will be able to answer this question. This is the end of today's other class. Thank you for joining and attending. Goodbye.